Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you. The title of today's sermon is called Created He Them. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do and what you've already done. Teach, teach us, Lord. Drench us in your love. Holy Spirit, Take us to another level of understanding in this sermon, God. Um, I know kind of what you've, what you've assigned for me to speak today, but Father, fill my mouth with words that I didn't even know were there. God, bring people out of darkness into your marvelous light using this sermon. Father, Speak to me, speak through me, in the name of Jesus, amen. Hi guys, I I got the title, the title is, is biblical, it's from the King James Version. When Moses writes about the garden, he says, male and female, created he them. Um, I was watching uh, Tim Ross on the basement and his interview with Lisa Vivere and she was talking about um, how she put on a t-shirt um, Apparently, there is a pop popular saying that says, uh, the future is female. Um, and she put on a t-shirt saying, the future is male and female. And she was talking about her new book, Fighting for Female, and how um, I haven't read the book, but um, it's about uh, how women have to fight for being female in their proper proper place, how to walk beside the, the male, um, not to overpower, but to assist and walk beside and our God-given calling as women. A beautiful conversation, a long conversation. I only got got through half of it, um, but I need to go back to it at some point. But as she was talking about that, um, and quid, um Godcidentally, I've also been reading the new Jodi Pico book called um, By Any Other Name. I'm in the midst of reading that now. I should be finished it after church t today. So, and that book is about, about two women in their time where they've been silenced because they are women and they've been told to just stay in their corners and, you know, just write and be quiet and all, all that. And the reason I called this sermon Created He Them is that that phrase, Created He Them, was said by by uh, Moses when he was talking about when God created man and women, woman in the garden. And I think what we've done uh, mistakenly, we've tried to set one gender above another and to say, that one gender is more important than the other gender, or we say, oh, men are all dogs, or, or women are all, 
women are this and men are this and and we put we pitted uh, the genders of male and female against each other. Now, God never, never, ever, ever wanted us to be pitted against each other. Instead, he wanted us to walk beside each other, not equal to, but as a complement to each other. So where they are, where men are physically strong, we are emotionally strong. Where they are, um, they can do things physically or they intuit things physically. We intuit things emotionally where they are um, where they are um, l- let's do it we've got to work we've got to go women are nurturing loving caring and I'm not saying that that the genders are specifically that way but our inherent design is meant to be different for a reason because what what women don't have men have and what men don't have women have we're not supposed to be fighting against each other trying to say that let's let's be women and be out of the kitchen or whatever and like let's fight to be to have the same places and opportunities as men but instead let's come alongside and walk in our own purpose as women and run our businesses and do our things the way we do it as women, so they, so together we can come alongside each other. Because sometimes we we think God given purpose is about um, talent or whatever. Sometimes she's more talented at running the business and finances than you are and you are more talented at staying at home and uh, looking after the children and sometimes she is more more talented most times she's more talented at staying at, at looking after the children and whatever, but I'm not saying you can't do it, but I'm saying women and men need to stop fighting for place and and understand that our purpose is not to fight with each other, it's not trying to compete with each other, it's to fight um for each other against a mutual enemy which which is the prince of darkness women and men are supposed to come alongside each other nobody's supposed to be uh, subs- uh, subservient or, or whatever um, and you will you you, you you will say, well, aren't, men, aren't women supposed to be submitted to men? And, and uh, uh, aren't women supposed to do what men say are to be submitted to men? And I would say, no, not even that. He says, 
he says, wives submit to your husbands and husbands love your wife. And he says, and after that, he says, we are supposed to be submitted to one another. When you take a, when you take apart the word submission, sub is to stand under. When you think of a submarine or subordinate or anything like that, it means to stand under and mission is a common cause or agenda. So submission means we stand under the same mission. That's what submission means. So, so sometimes it would be the woman sub submitting to the man. Sometimes it would be the man submitting to the woman, just just depending on who who who's making better sense. We've spent years upon years fighting against each other, telling well, uh, men have spent years and years telling um, women to be quiet and to be just okay and don't make any noise. And what has happened is that when you suppress any voice, it, be, it, it becomes like when you suppress any voice and tell any person that they can't speak or they don't have a voice, eventually they'll rebel. And that's what has happened. We started too much on one side, telling women that they could, they all they had to, all they had to offer to society is to stay home and raise the children. They didn't have the mind or whatever. And then, and then, in the sixties. Women came along and said, no, we have a mind, we have a voice. And they just went to work. They started working in factories and started uh, um, doing their own thing. And I applaud any woman that, that starts a business and does her thing. But the problem is now we've kind of, instead of coming alongside men and men coming alongside w women with our different skills and our different purposes, we're competing uh, for place. We're complete. We're completing. We're competing for a voice. And we are silencing each other. Um, uh, as men and as men and women, we silence women uh, physically. We physically say, as a woman, as a woman, you can't speak or or. or Sometimes um, women get token projects to say that, yeah, we'll, we'll give them this, but we won't expect anything or whatever. And, and sometimes um, you'll only see one wo woman at a business meeting and you won't see, you know, you know, you, you won't see uh, minorities at a business meeting or it's very few and we've silenced each other that way. But we've also silenced men emotionally. We've said, you know what, you can't do this. And we, we, we've coined the term now toxic masculinity and we talk all the time 
about toxic masculinity and we should uh, talk about toxic masculinity, but we need to also talk about what does it mean to be healthy as a man, to be emotionally healthy as a man. Have we have have we ever thought that um, these men that are so-called jerks haven't been trained by men how to be real men? They haven't been trained. They they don't know, and I'm not saying that that's an excuse, but that's where where some men are starting from. So we're not giving them a place to be emotional and they're not gi giving us a place to be, you know, to stand in our purpose and walk beside them hand in hand and come up with ideas and walk together. So both genders, I think, have their own struggles. And I think it's time that we just stop competing with each other and start understanding each other and start understanding that she has ideas. She has wonderful ideas. And you would be, you would be remiss not to listen to her because one thing I can tell you about women is, is they're very intuitive. Most women are extremely intuitive and she will, she, she could, she, if you let her have a voice or an idea at the table, oh my gosh, she could get into it if that guy's a slime ball or, or what whatever she she can sense uh if the deal is right or whatever because women are very intuitive and if you let if you let him show his emotions as a man he'd be freed to to comfort you and to be a healthy man for you an emotion it's, there's a difference between emotional, where you let your emotions take over, and emotion, and emotionally healthy. We talk about uh, toxic masculinity that man can, that men can't cry and all that stuff, but we need to start talking about as a society healthy masculinity that it's healthy for a man to uh, show emotion. See, it's not healthy for anybody to be emotional, but it's healthy for everybody to show emotion. And men need that space too to show emotion. Real men cry. Real men know how to ha handle their feelings. Real men let it out. Real men talk to other men about their issues. Real men have male friends. Real, like they, they do, you need that to be emotionally healthy. So you have emotionally unhealthy, unhealthy men. It, and when a man, and when, in my experience, from what I've seen, when a man is emotionally unhealthy, they get insecure. And when a man's insecure, it comes out in many different ways. It can be, it can come out in the abuse of a woman. It can come out in... Uh, self-destruction like alcohol and drugs it can come out in several ways so could it be that the problems that men are facing is because they're emotionally unhealthy 
because they weren't allowed to uh, show their emotions. They had to bottle them up because if you don't let out your emotions, your emotions will come out um, other ways. So get yourself emotionally healthy men. And for women, physic physically, if you have an idea, an idea, show it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And um, and male CEOs, do not be afraid of the women on your team, because if you let her succeed, if you give her credit, she'll shine. Women generally, in my limited experience, shine with praise. You know, if you give her the pre- credit, if you let her shine, she will take over the world and she will make you look good. Um, I was um, really admiring Barbara Butcher who is um, a female uh, uh, death examiner. She she, she examines uh, dead bodies when they were murdered to find out what happened. And she always gives credit to her mentor. And even though She's about 60 now, and her mentor has been gone for about three, four years. She still talks about him, and she's like, he's the best man ever. So men, don't be afraid to let your, to let women on your team shine, to let women at your church shine to don't be afraid of that because if you let her shine she'll make you look good and she'll 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 just be off there's no need to be insecure and whatever because if you're a quality leader she will stay if you're a quality leader she will stay and she will love you for it, and you, your church will be better for it. Because women have several I, ideas. Not only are they intuitive, but they can think through things. that They can see things that men don't see. They can see around corners that men don't see. They can see issues, come up with solutions that men don't see um, generally. And so adding her her input to your team and giving her the credit will just not only blossom her, but it will but it will take you to a different le- level. If we if we let Everyone contribute, every woman, every man, every person. We all have something. Our world will be so much better if we stop fighting with each other and competing with each other and now working with each other because we, what, 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 what men don't have Women are designed to come alongside and work with the man, not fight against him. And sometimes we 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 confuse task with like purpose. Oh, uh, the purpose of a woman is just to to stay home, take care of kids. Nope, Th- that's not. All she's purpose to do. Those are tasks. Like a- anyone can do the dishes. Anyone can grab a broom and sweep the floor. Anyone can do tasks. Um, 
but it's it's nobody's job to do that. Um, it's everybody's job to to contribute to the household, whether you are a woman or a man. And it's very healthy for for men to look after children. It's extremely healthy for a man to look after his children. So that way, that way bonding is created. That way a relationship is created. Could it be why so many men don't have a relationship with their children is because they didn't have uh, the time to bond because mommy was always looking after them. And they said, no, I'm not good at that. Um, Newsflash, sir, nobody is good at that. You learn. You teach yourself. You can read books about different things. Nobody's good at that. But but to bond with your children is amazing. And that's the experience that I'm looking forward to with, with my husband one day is to raise our children together to see what he'll contribute to them and to see what I'll contribute to them. The reason why we have so many broken children is because we have uh, so many fractured relationships. And we were under the mistaken impression that um, men can just leave and women will take up the slack. No, no, you cannot just leave. That child needs you. It doesn't matter if you're scared. It doesn't matter if you ha- had a father. It, all of that doesn't matter. That child needs you. If you don't know what to do, say something. Read a book. Watch a YouTube video. Say, say I, do, I don't know how to do this. I'm scared. Because Newsflash, she's scared too. Because most times, if it's an unplanned pregnancy, she's scared, too. So what gives you the right to, 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 to walk off like that child isn't your responsibility either. And you can just go fancy free. Too ma- I've seen too many fatherless children. And... It is wrong because of they need that voice of a father. They need that voice of a mother. And so what if you don't know what to do? So what if you, you know, have never had a father before? You can learn. You're smart enough to learn. And I think we've let too many men off the hook. To say, oh yeah, you could just you could just leave and send money a month and you know whatever. No, we need to start holding uh, these men accountable. These women can't do it themselves because, sir, there's a reason why your shoulders are broader. Women are not meant to carry what you can carry. Remember I said um, women come alongside men? Their shoulders are physically smaller because they don't have to physically carry the burden. But now you have so many women physically carrying what they're not designed to carry but they feel that they have to carry it cuz there's no man there there's no man there to carry it and they're like if i have to carry it alone i'll carry it alone but they shouldn't have to carry it alone
you should be right there. It doesn't matter what your relationship is with her. And I know, and I know some some situations where the woman is vindictive or whatever. And if you're doing that, if you're keeping your the child away from their father because you're you're just mad or whatever he left you when you're you're punishing him, ma'am, you're wrong for that. That child needs their father. They need the male voice of their father. They don't just need the father's money and whatever your feelings are towards him, put that aside to the for the for the good of your child. It what it's not that that little one's fault that the relationship or whatever went wrong. It's whatever happened between you and their dad is not their their fault. Do not ever use them as weapons. They are children. They are meant to be children. And whatever issues you have with him are with him. They children need their fathers. So if you are preventing it, Stop it. It's not good for you and it's not good for your for your children. As I said, women and men need to come alongside each other and know that God gave us each different giftings where he's hard we're soft, where he's about work, we, we are nurturing. Like, God gave us those giftings so we could complement each other, not compete with each other. And let's not complete, let's not confuse doing tasks with the purpose. A woman and a man's purpose um, on the earth is to is is the same. Their their overall purpose is the same, and is to glorify God through their life. Whether you're a woman or a man, whatever stage you are, whatever color you are, whatever creed you are. It's to glorify him with your life. So when people see your life, they should see, they should sense, they should feel the glory of God. When people see your relationship, they should see, feel, sense the glory of God. But many relationships... Um, they didn't get together because God put you together. They they got together because sex put you together. Or they got together because loneliness, mortgage, bills put you together. Or, or you got together because of desperation. People need to start getting together because it's the God-ordained thing. Singleness is not for finding a man. Singleness is for knowing, for discovering, first of all, your relationship with him. And and how you discover your relationship with him is finding your rhythm with him. So once you find your rhythm and get to sense and hear and feel his voice, then when the right man comes along, your your senses as a woman and a man will say, God can say, nope, that person is free, not for you, and, or yes, and he'll, he'll let you solve that problem. 
he'll guide you through solving that issue. I believe um, a lot of Christian couples get divorced because God is not in their marriage. They both believe in God, but he is not the third person in their marriage. Because if he was, the voice of God would be constantly in your ear and in your marriage. Um, and that kind of relationship with the Lord, that kind of intimacy with the Lord, has to start from when you're single. So singleness is not trying to find a man. Singleness is trying to find a relationship with God. And in that relationship with God, you find yourself. And if God will, then he brings your your partner, your marital partner to you. And together, you create a new kind of glory together. And, and together, as a couple, you create a new glory. I know this because I've asked, I've asked the Lord about all this. So that's what he told me. Like, so it's not women competing with each other. It's not women competing with men. It's not men competing with men. It's us coming alongside each other, giving each other what we don't have to create something beautiful, something new, something wonderful, something spectacular. And the future is male and female because we can't do it without each other. We weren't designed to. It doesn't it doesn't matter that we say, Oh, we don't need a man. Oh yes we do. And oh men don't need women. Yes they do. We need each other because we have different giftings. But the only th the only reason we say we don't need each other is because we've only dealt with broken people. And when you're dealing with broken people and you've broken yourself, you can't fix each other. It just creates a bigger sense of brokenness. So you have broken per people finding each other and trying to make it work and all you you can't fix another person if you get together with a broken person and you're a broken person you just create more brokenness so broken people create broken kids broken kids create broken homes and broken homes create broken communities and broken communities create broken societies and broken societies created broken worlds. So what what we need to do as a society is to teach people um, to get into relationship with God first. And then that relationship with God will, will funnel into the relationship with yourself. Because the reason why that relationship with God will funnel into a relationship with yourself is because he knows you. He knows you better than you know you. And he will say you're triggered by this because of this. And you're, you're angry because of this. And you felt that way because of that. And you will get to know yourself. Because you know God, because he designed you, and he knows how you work, and he knows how you roll. And then, in that, he will bring a, a, a whole person into your life who knows how they roll, who knows 
how they are, who knows how to hear the voice of God for their lives. And then together, you will create a new glory for your children. And they'll grow up in that glorious environment that's God-given, life-given, and they will get to hear the voice of God for their lives. And this is, this is amazing. It's really just amazing. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for just um, being who you are, Father. I praise you and thank you for teaching us. Thank you for restoring us. Thank you for giving us peace. Thank you for giving us instruction. Thank you for giving us love. I praise you and worship you and give you everything of me. Father, I praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye.